Right. No. Design. Oh. But there was still water. Yeah, it was a contact, but there's still water getting into the box. That yeah. was the issue. Yeah. Well, they didn't necessarily agree people. Yeah. Well, <coughs> they fixed it. So yeah. It's yeah. not working. I'm going to seal it all up. It's my show. Okay. And as I can, I'll go back and I'll see if I have some. Yeah. Kind of surprised that. Didn't, didn't this eatery pay for like the last three months of the year for a liquor license? Or? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they really wanted to be open by in October, yeah. and that didn't happen. Of course, I suppose. Now they can't. Yeah, now they can't. So that might be something. You might All right, it is six. We will call the meeting to order. Open up the pledge of allegiance, please. Huh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right, just a note that we do have uh, counselors uh, Gilmore and Rinky zooming in tonight, and I see that Sean, at least has a shirt and tie on, Len is uh, not as formally attired, so. Thank you, Sean, for holding or uh, raising the standards here. And uh, just a note that uh, Belinda will be, I think, keeping an eye on those two if they want to chime in or whatever to uh, I'll try and keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, just to report that City Hall will be closed both Thursday for Thanksgiving and Friday, so don't plan on coming in for anything on Thursday or Friday. And that is my report, uh, Councillor LeBeau. Um, I attended our special city council meeting that we had, mm -hmm. and that is it. Okay, and Councillor Eckford. We had the uh, Canvas special meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, the 18th we had a property and negotiation meeting. All right, thank you, Councillor Renke. We had a property negotiations meeting and a uh, policies and procedures meeting. Policy and procedures. You guys meet like every day, right? <laughs> Only right. at one's request. <laughs> and Councillor Gilmore. Uh, policies and procedures meeting. All right. <laughs> Thank you. We do have a couple department head reports. We'll start with uh, Belinda Ludwig. You know, I really don't have a lot. You stole my thunder in announcing that City Hall was closed Thursday and Friday. Sorry. And just encouraging people with the COVID numbers continuing to increase, we are still able to do motor vehicle using our drop-off box outside the one that's marked City of Painesville, not West Central. <laughs> and mail-in options are always tab renewals. Just make sure you put your phone number, mailing address on the paperwork with a blank check. We will send you then a copy of that check with the receipt. Um, Anything city related, you could always drop off your building permits in the drop box. Any way to encourage people to not come in if they can help it. Okay, any That's questions for Belinda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, Ron Mergen. All right, thank you. First of all, under informational in your the agenda packet, you can see there's a uh, letter from the Department of Health. That informs us that uh, we now have to do three bacteriological samples instead of two. Um, also then in the water department, the VOC plant, the repiping that is um, in progress right now, anticipated about approximately a month or so to complete. Out at the airport, um, just reviewing the fuel usage over the year. Um, currently, we're just over 14,000 gallons. The previously, the most we'd ever done was about 13,000. So we still have about a good month to go. So it's very possible we could hit uh, 15,000 gallons. <laughs> um, also at the airport, though, we did lose one pilot. He is uh, headed out to, he took a different job out west. So we will have one vacancy currently. Um, out at the compost, um, I guess I would like to thank everyone for their donations. Um, to date, um, we've, we're currently over uh, $1,600. <laughs> and also we did submit the SCORE grant. Um, that is, I think it was $3,000 that supports the recycling at the uh, compost. And also we can utilize those funds for the household hazardous waste uh, cleanup. 
And under the parks, we do have the park comp plan, which we'll be going through in the agenda a little bit later. And then also there's a little bit of a local uh, a push to get the uh, Glacier Lakes Trail completed. That's a trail from Wilmer that will eventually go all the way to uh, St. Joe. There's one seven mile stretch locally here that is uh, not complete. Um, the DNR noted that uh, they are pursuing getting the portion done from Roscoe up to um, Old Painesville. And from there, um, the local push will be to try to bring it in through town. Uh, so that uh, trail committee will have to be uh, revitalized, put together again, and uh, pursue the funding for that project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ron? Okay, hearing none, then we have the consent agenda before us, which will be the minutes from those seven meetings on page one, the vouchers on page two, totaling $319,753.40. And then the uh, um, Carly Brockner has submitted her resignation and she has amended that from a year and a month to uh, one month notice <laughs> in the update. <laughs> It's December 31st of 2020, and uh, the motion to approve that effective December 31st, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by LeBeau, seconded by, I believe that was Rinky. Discussion? Nope. Just I think we should take Kylie's resignation out so we can vote it down, but that's probably frowned upon. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, you had your, your hand up, Neil, was... I think I seconded the motion. Oh, you did, okay. It's hard to <laughs> kind of tell here, so, okay. So that was a motion by LeBeau, seconded by Hertzberg. Uh, any other discussion or corrections? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. There was a couple of lies from the remotes, I assume. Karen. Yep. Aye. Yep, all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Uh, then the uh, first item of new business is the 2021 liquor licenses, and uh, they are listed there. Uh, Painesville American Legion Post 271, Queen Bee's Bar and Grill, Inc., and the Eatery at 112 LLC. I'll make the motion to approve the 2021 on sale liquor and Sunday liquor licenses for the Painesville American Legion Post 271, Queen Bee's Bar and Grill, Inc., and the Eatery at 112 LLC. Was that Rinky that seconded? Who seconded? Me. Oh, Gilmore, okay. Motion by LeBeau, second by Gilmore, to approve those 2021 on sale liquor and Sunday liquor licenses as on the action sheet. Discussion? All in favor, aye. I believe the application fee has already been paid. Yes, I've already deposited the checks. So if we wanted to do some sort of relief, again, it would have to be in the form of a refund? Which is probably a better way to track it anyway, Sean. So yes, that would be. Yep. Because I think by statute, they're probably required to be paid before we can even issue them, aren't they? I think so. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, oh. I was just wondering if we shouldn't look at another refund given there's another at least four weeks of being closed. That's well, these are for 21. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that goes into effect um, for next year. Yeah, we can always take a look back on 2020 because it will be at least four weeks, potentially longer, so. Anything else? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None, that carried. Okay, the next item is we have received a notice of resignation from G. Nichols, part-time liquor store clerk, effective on 30th of November, so we're looking for a motion to accept that. I'll make, the make a motion to accept the resignation from Gene Nichols, part-time liquor store clerk. Second. Motion by Gilmore, second by Hertzberg to accept the resignation from Gene Nichols, part-time liquor store clerk. Discussion? 
All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. And then we'd like a motion to start the hiring process for a part-time liquor store clerk and create an eligibility list for such. I'll make the motion. Oh, no. I'll give LeBeau the motion and Rinky the second because you basically hit the same thing, same time. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. Thank you. Then the next item, we've had a couple city ad hoc boards that have completed their, their work, the ad hoc front counter board and the ad hoc library development board. And uh, maybe it's not necessarily com completed, but they have uh, done what they have tried to set out to do and we have moved on in other ways. I was just thinking about the ad hoc front counter board. Would it make sense to keep that one around just to look into the furniture rearranging and stuff with uh, Jennifer and Belinda and what other uh, other things we were discussing at our last meeting? No. Yeah. Potentially. Maybe just leave it there for Tarek, and then we can fill it in February if it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. I would go with that uh, for the process. If we start spending all the money on the furniture and so forth, maybe they need to look into something else at the same time. Um, so I would go along with Sean on keeping the front counter board because it's sense. So I'll move to disband the ad hoc library development board. Second. No second then. Okay, we have motion by Rinky, seconded by LeBeau to disband the ad hoc library development board. Any other discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. And that carried. And as Ron alluded to, uh, we have some airport things coming up here. Uh, we have to, we're looking to uh, um, approve a T hanger lease between Peter Dillon and then also uh, a storage one for Jeremy Bretger. Ron? That pretty much tells it. We do have a gentleman moving in, and um, the other storage unit that we did have available is also now rented. So. And just to note that that storage is a, a part of the hangar that's not usable or functional for an aircraft. So. That is correct. Yep. Not like we're starting to rent storage out there to the... Yep. I'll make the motion to approve the T hangar lease between Peter Dillon and the city of Painesville for hangar number 10 in the amount of $100 per month and a storage garage lease between Jeremy Brutger and the city of Painesville for a storage garage in the amount of $75 per month. Second. Is that uh, Rinky? Mm -hmm. okay, motion by LeBeau, seconded by Rinky to approve the T-hanger lease between Peter Dillon and the city of Painesville for hangar number 10. Any amount of $100 per month and a storage garage lease between Jeremy Brutger and the City of Painesville for a storage garage in the amount of $75 per month. Any discussion? Ron, uh, on the storage, uh, what kind of dimensions? How big is that uh, the storage area? It is exactly half of a T hanger. So, square footage, uh, you would guess it's 16 by 24, it says in the lease. Mm. 16 by 24? Anything else? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. And that carried. And as Ron had alluded to also, the uh, uh, comp park for the uh, comp park, comprehensive plan for the uh, park system in the city is <coughs> updated or looks to be updated here. This actually goes back to like 2008, as you can see, it's been uh, updated a few times. So, Ron, do you want to 
Okay, thank you. Um, as the mayor noted, um, the original was done in 2008. It uh, covers our eight park systems, two of which are neighborhood parks, a nature and a naturehood park. Um, I guess I am just going to go through most of the proposed plans that we do have currently. I guess I would be on uh, page 32 of the agenda. Our park improvements, first of all, at the gazebo. We've done a lot of work there over the last number of years. Um, what the committee had kind of noted is uh, the gazebo needs a little TLC and mainly um, in its roof. They looked at possibly putting a skylight in, a ramp, a wind block. Um, so there will be more going back to the park board with some estimated costs. Um, but for the most part, uh, our money, our, we would be looking at the Ampi Park, which we will get to in a little bit. Uh, South Street Park, actually both the neighborhood South Street and Maple Street Park, um, we would just be replacing equipment, trees on an as needed basis. Um, most of the equipment out there would probably have a 20 year lifespan. I think it was put in about uh, six, eight years ago. So, And I would be again the same for the Maple Street Park. Then on the Ampi Park, um, proposed amenities out there, number one, um, when we do have uh, soccer games out there, I guess we've seen crowds as probably as big as that uh, 250. Um, so the number one priority is try to get a restroom storage area out there along with uh, some type of shelter and pavilion and a playground area. Um, we'd also like to expand that uh, sprinkler system that we currently have out there when it is being utilized for soccer. Um, there are a lot of people and it's used every day. Um, then a nature, some kind of nature <coughs> barrier, get some trees out there and a uh, trails walking path and obviously benches, picnic tables, etc. cetera. Um, Cost-wise out there, just for the restrooms, a few years ago when we built those into community park, we were looking at about 45,000. Obviously it's gonna be a little more. The shelter, pavilion, you know, depending on uh, the design that could be easily be from anywhere to 100 to another 150. So playground equipment, you know, just with what we put in the uh, in the gazebo park and out at the uh, beach, you know, that was almost, that was actually over 100,000. So, like I said, the majority of our next few years' budgets will be uh, aimed at the Ampi Park. Um, Nature Park, I did uh, have a little conversation with uh, the people who are running that, and they're still looking at a possibly adding some land on the north side of the river and some type of a pedestrian bridge to get across the river. Obviously, uh, those <coughs> will take some additional funding, so he didn't have any timeline on any of that. Um, Veterans Park, you can see by the uh, number of things or existing amenities there, uh, what we've all done over the years. Um, but for the next few years, mainly we would uh, like to replace the trail that goes uh, up to the beach and around the north end and the biggest thing out there is reconfiguring the boat parking. Um, there has been a huge surge in the number of boats, uh, boats and trailers that we are seeing out there. Um, so that will be one of the biggest things that the committee is tackling right now. Um, and then out at the uh, community park, um, I guess what we'd like to do is uh, reseed the majority of that park and add some type of a basketball slash pickleball court and possibly a skate park and some possibly some new signage right there. And then at the uh, Veterans Memorial Park, um, that would be run pretty much on a status quo. Mm -hmm. There's it's a pretty small park, so we wouldn't be doing just uh, maintaining it, that would be about it. And then we do have some estimated costs on, I think it's page 50, you know, the total would be approximately 580,000 <laughs> there. And we do have inserted our neighborhood park policy. And again, for anybody who doesn't know, the neighborhoods 
uh, they do need to maintain that park. If they do not, um, it was in there that the city then has the option to look at possibly uh, selling it. So, I guess if there's any questions, I'd be glad to field them or. Um, just one, and then you know the neighborhood parks that that seems to be working out well with uh, maintenance. It does, yes. Yep, the neighborhoods uh, they take a special pride in them, and they do an extremely good job of maintaining them, trimming, mowing, etc. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I reading this right? That a pedestrian bridge out of the nature park is estimated at three hundred thousand. A bridge to get across the river, yes, that would probably be on the very low end. Chuck, you could maybe back me up on that also. Yeah, I think that would, that would probably be towards the low side. Of the mm -hmm. It depends on the span, it's the big thing. The, uh, the, the one out at the, on the south end of Cronus over the, you know, the carp trap or that bridge there, do you remember what that cost was when that was moved off the bridge and the uh, pedestrian bridge is put in? I, if I had to guess, I thought it was more than a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. And was that one that was moved in? Or was it built? I forget. That one was built there. Did you okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember on right that one got, got to be over 100 feet long, and that's mm -hmm. sort of one of those critical points where they start to get really expensive depending on the span. Yeah. And a reminder that this is just a plan. It's nothing carved in stone and uh, just gives us something to pull out. Uh, in, in the case, if you look at something like uh, grants or you know other types of things, it's a handy tool to have on hand. How, uh, how wide a span is the river? At least 100, huh? I think the biggest obstacle we'll have there also is that, obviously, it is in the 100-year floodplain. Mm -hmm. um, so somehow that would have to be overcome also. But the span, yes, I believe would be about 100 feet. This is Sean, I will move to approve the amended comprehensive park plan. Second. Motion by Rinke, seconded by LeBeau to approve the amended comprehensive park plan. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. Thank you. Then on to old business, and Belinda will give us an update on the PT hours and why we're talking about it now. So back in, uh, toward the earlier part of COVID, the, um, it was brought to the council's attention that there were some staff due to COVID and due to the absence of administrator that were getting awfully close or maxing out on their PTO time. Um, so the council had said that they would up the max from 325 hours to 400 hours through the end of the year and to bring it back in November to discuss it and see where we're at. Um, what we're running into a little bit is we have eight employees that are over the 325 some of those employees are over the 325 due to positive cases of COVID or people having to quarantine. So they're not able to take off because they're having to cover shifts. They're having to rearrange staffing. Um, the admin office, it is, um, it's hit the admin office with Stephanie also leaving. Now we're trying to do the accounts payable and payroll on top of admin duties. So we do have a, eight employees that are kind of still in that hot spot. Um, I, I went out and looked today. There is about half of those employees that are take, they have planned time off coming up, but it probably won't be enough to get them down below the 325. So I guess my request to you would be maybe to look at extending that. January and February are not good months to try to take off PTO and admin because of the audit. Unfortunately, so I think in order to be honest, it would have to be extended a little further than that. Um, otherwise, on the end of December, the way payroll, the ENCODE system works is we would turn that button back to 325 and whatever balance anyone has above that, it would just be wiped off. 
So that is the update. Do we have any over 400 right now? We do not. So everybody's under 400. Everybody is under 400. And it appears that of the eight people that are in risk of being over, we run anywhere from right at 350 to right at 390. And my thought was maybe we could extend it out to June and hope that by then everything's back to normal or as normal as we can be. Mm -hmm. Would it, would it be realistic to make the number 375 to extend out to June? Um, if you did 375, I, I did calculate in everybody's accrual that they'll get in December. You would have currently two people that are over that. I know one of them is planning on taking time off to get down below it. So you think it would help us if we extended the same thing we're doing right now until uh, first or second meeting in February to see where we're going to see if everybody can get, get the time off and so forth or not? Um, I don't know that January, February would help a whole lot just because that's audit season, Len. And, and with Tarek just coming, you know, he's, he's, there's going to be that learning curve there. There's going to be a lot of work with him. Um, Something will have to be done, obviously, with Steph's position or some rearrangement of that position when Terry gets here. Well, Nobody's going over by our next meeting, are they, that you know of? Nobody is going over. I have calculated out through the end of December, mm -hmm. and we have one person that would be at 390, one at 380, one at 370, two right at about 365, <clears throat> and three at about 350. So what happens come January? December 31st, we would, ch if, if the way it stands right now, the way the council's mo motion stands right now is I would turn that button off in ENCODE from 400 to 325, and anybody that has over 325 would lose those hours, and they would also not be able to earn anymore. So at the 400, like the person who has 390 going into January would have to use some, or? Well, that person would have to potentially use 65 hours in December. I mean, even if we had the 400 extension into next year. If, yeah, if we went into next year, they would still come January, have to use some hours because they're going to accumulate right. more. I did include their December accumulation in this figure. That's why I'd kind of like to wean it from 400. Let's get 380, 375. Let's go in the right direction well what Belinda's saying is if you do that people are going to be losing their PTO time because they won't have opportunity to use it well in the next few months how many hours can people turn in at the end of the year not on PTO no PTO no buyout on PTO unless you change that if you be approved by the union I, I would assume it had to be an MOU but I mean it's kind of a benefit for the employee so I can't imagine the union would have a problem with it mm -hmm. we can buy out our comp time Len okay yeah. but not your PTO time not our PTO simplest would be I think to extend the existing uh, um, Probably. what the what the council had the Probably. I just don't think until February at the end of the first quarter or sometime beyond that Sounds like. Okay, um, just throw something out there real quick since this is all COVID related, basically all the PTO hours and so forth. And if we have COVID money or if we don't, it doesn't matter, but 
How would it work since we don't pay for PTO hours if there was the option for the employees to get to turn in, let's say, a hundred hours for fifty <clears> percent <throat> instead of them losing it? If it came down to that, would that apply for COVID? Because you'd have to prove that it was due to COVID that they were up at that area. And, and I think part of the staff is, it might be, it would be hard to prove, but I think part of the staff is affected by COVID. I think your admin staff is probably affected more from the administrator being gone and now Stephanie being gone than from COVID. I just don't want anybody to lose it if there's, um, you know what I mean? That's the thing, Len. I mean, I really, I hate to see any of these people lose it because they've stepped up to the plate. These people have worked really hard trying to keep the city going. I, I agree with Jeff. I think the best thing that we can do is to extend that at least into next year sometime. Um, 16, 23. Can we look at this again on the 14th and do some soul checking and see what we can come up with? Yep, we could. I like said uh, we don't have to, you know, act on it now. We can do some some thinking. Okay. I like one's idea of saying if we can do a payout, so that might be worth exploring between now and the 14th. If that's something that we could work out with the union, or if any employees are even interested in it. Hmm. I, I'm not really in favor of payout. I think that sets a bad precedent. You do it once, and all at once you. Well, I think we've got a precedent already with COVID. It's unprecedented. <laughs> that, that's probably the you know my my concern is if it would be legal under the you know the uh, the restrictions for how to handle that cares money or whatever. So. Well, and the cares money is spent. That's spent. Yep. So. Okay, we will put this on the agenda for the first meeting in December, which coincidentally is also our truth in taxation. And I guess um, if there's any way, Belinda, to find out um, like how that may impact our budget for this year, if we were to do a buyout on that. I don't know if there's any way to figure that out. But if well, it would depend on how many hours you'd let them buy out. And yeah. I guess what happens if some are interested in the buyout and others maybe aren't, but then they're forced into losing it mm -hmm. by what we see. Right. So, and, and is that fair to the guy that's at 325? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're p kind of penalizing him for playing the game. So. These, the staff that we have on the list are all over 325. There's nobody else even close to 325. Okay. All right, well, this will show up on the 14th. Okay. And we'll move on to item B, which is hiring of firefighters. They, uh, they or we received four applications and uh, three were interviewed. Uh, Chief Andy is requesting to hire Dakota Crummery, Jeremiah Den, and Brody Strand as volunteer firefighters upon completion of one year probation. Okay, okay um, I'll make the motion to hire Dakota Crummery, Jeremiah Den, and Brody Strand as Painsville volunteer firefighters upon the completion of one year probation. I gotta ask a question though. Okay, we should get a second. I'll second. Okay, okay we have two seconds, so you can ask two questions. <laughs> okay, perfect, thank you. Now this is also on the completion of their background check, correct? Don't they have to have a background check? Or not? I'm looking at Paul because I don't know. And I'm looking at Paul because that's usually um, initiated by the department head. Mm -hmm. that. Traditionally, we run background checks on the firefighters. I haven't received anything on it to run a background check yet. So, Can you hear him, Len? No. So Paul said that traditionally, we do do background checks on the firefighters, on new fire, fire hires. He has not received anything from Andy at this point. Um, 
he hasn't received what? Anything from Andy to do so yet. Oh, right. But I mean, if they fail that background check, then they can't get hired. Correct. That's what I was asking about my motion, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Um, make, make it part of your motion. Yeah. We, you, is that, technically, it hasn't been uh, repeated, so you can uh, re reword your motion to it. In include that uh, you know, contingent on passing their background checks. And if that's uh, okay with uh, Alicia, Councillor LeBeau, that's what the motion would be. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Other discussion? So the motion is to hire Dakota Crumery, Jeremiah Din, and Brody Strand as Painsville Volunteer Firefighters. Uh, contingent upon um, passing the background check and the completion of one year probation. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. Thanks, Len. Okay, then the uh, next one is uh, Ron will give us a good news report here. Okay, the, from the Department of Health, the Source Water uh, Protection Grant and the uh, Wellhead Program. Um, the grant that we had applied for has been approved and that is again for our to continue our well sealing program uh, so if anyone does have any uh, wells that they're currently not using or abandoned um, we do have the funds available to get them sealed up and the other part would be our wellhead newsletter which we will be putting out again early spring sometime um, the other portion that we normally apply for would be the water festival um, but at this time, the Department of Health does not want to see something that might be a question. Mm -hmm. We put it on there, they want us to use the money. Um, so they had recommended not putting it on at this time. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the Minnesota Department of Health source water grant and authorize the mayor and acting Co-City Administrator to sign the document. Second. Motion by Hertzberg, seconded by LeBeau, exactly as on the action sheet, page 64, in regards to the Department of Health Source Water Grant in uh, discussion. I just have one question. You, you know, as far as capping the wells, is that only within the city or is it within the wellhead protection area? It is within the entire wellhead protection area. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. So, because there really, there shouldn't be any uncapped wells in the city, are there? Oh, well, there's far more than you would think. Oh, okay. Yes. Many of them are old um, prior to oh, okay. the area having uh, water in it. So yes, there are some. Okay. Anything else? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. And the uh, last item here is, I know there was some discussion at the last um, meeting, which was that special meeting to canvas the ballots about the city service recognition luncheon, whether or not to have it or not, but it, uh, we can't have it because there's no place to go. <laughs> so we're looking for a motion to cancel that until the pandemic limitations allow it. Mo motion to cancel. Second. Motion by Hertzberg, seconded by LeBeau to cancel the city service recognition until the pandemic limitations allow it to happen safely. Discussion? <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. Aye. That carried. That's it for business. The uh, rest is informational. We have the note there from Jeremy Wilner at MAG Wealth Management that he's keeping an eye on um, various investment funds for the city. Not much that can be done right now. Uh, the note there from the uh, to uh, Ron about the increasing the uh, coliform samples from two to three, so more work for you guys to do. And the uh, note or the <coughs> monthly report, bless you, from West Central Sanitation. A note there that the financials and other reports are on the city website, and then the December-January meeting schedules. Uh, with that, have you 
I was going to say have a happy Thanksgiving, but stay home and be healthy, I guess. <laughs> have a healthy Thanksgiving. We're adjourned.